So let me interrupt you from doing that. Okay, as you could probably tell, this is, this is a way of asking you to process what went on in the presentation part, right? And I'm guessing that you already have your students process what goes on in your classes in various different ways. But I kind of want to assert that you don't do it enough. We as teachers don't have our students process enough. Um, you can notice that uh, uh, I really asked ask the same question in two different ways, right? So there's nothing very important, particularly about the phrasing of the question, but I have my students process a great deal. And that's what I'm gonna be asking you to be focusing on today during much of the webinar. I, I for instance, will ask, will give my students a reading and I'll say, okay, uh, now in just two minutes, write down what you see as the main point of the reading or what conclusion is the author drawing and what reasons does the author give for it? And, uh, um, uh, or I'm, I might ask them, okay, so we just, you just did a reading for today. How does that relate to what we were talking about in class last time? Or more challengingly, I could say to my class, Remember a few weeks ago, we were talking about X. How does the reading you did for today relate to what we were talking about with X? Because with my students, X is out the window. I mean, that's several weeks ago. That's, that's gone. That's entirely gone. So I can ask them to process it. And, um, it, it, and I want you to notice, I gave two minutes for this. I really only wanted to give one because I wasn't very concerned about your actual answer to the question. I was concerned about focusing on processing, but I'm hoping you that you experience something like this, not that this was difficult at all, but that your way of approaching the content of that presentation is different when I ask you to write down the main point of it. It's different from just sitting there and passively hearing it. It makes your focus go in. That's a major part of critical thinking. I often, I often think that uh, a good deal of the way critical thinking works is it works through focusing. Uh, with my students, I'll, I'll, I'll often just think of, the, of, of a two minute uh, processing assignment for them to do. And I'll often think of that at the spur of the moment. I won't have it ahead of time. And sometimes I don't say it all that clearly. Uh, and uh, sometimes the students don't understand it all that clearly. So I'll tell them, if you don't understand what I'm asking you to do, you can ask, but if you don't feel like asking, do something that makes sense. Do something that's reasonable. Looking out the window is not a reasonable way. Um, so, uh, uh, so I'm getting them to pay attention more or are trying to do that anyhow. Okay, so here's my scheme for teaching for critical thinking. This is my basic boiled down scheme for teaching for critical thinking, and it's this. You do something, they process it, and you give feedback. You do something, maybe you, maybe you give a presentation, maybe you give, uh, maybe you have a view of video, maybe you give them a reading, but you do something. And then you have them process it in one way or another. We're gonna go through a number of ways they have students process it, process what goes on in your class. And then third, you give feedback. This is my boiled down scheme of teaching for critical thinking, or I could say teaching for understanding, teaching for understanding. You explain a concept to them, you have them process it, and then you give feedback. Of these three, the one that I think is least important is the first one. You do something, right? I mean, I can have them do a reading and then have them process it. What is essential in my, to my way of thinking is giving feedback. That seems to me to be a main role in teaching my students to understand things, to give feedback on it. To give feedback, it doesn't mean I have to give feedback to each individual student. I can, depending on the number of students and how often you do it, but I can give feedback to the whole class. Um, for instance, I can say, well, uh, with this one, uh, here's what I would say the main point of the presentation is, or the significance of the presentation so far. Or I could ask, uh, I could ask a student, uh, is it okay if I read yours? And if the student says yes, then I could read theirs and say, okay, here's one. And uh, wow, that's a really nice one. Or I might say, uh, it's, it's a good answer, 
But I think you missed a key part of it. That's my judgment about it. You may not agree. It's, it, it's okay. So I'm going to be giving feedback. I think the feedback is essential. I'm very much for active learning, for having students work in groups. But I find that many times what my students do is they, they exchange prejudices with one another or give out it misinformation to one another. They trade various points of view. And they need the feedback from, I'll say, an expert. That is, they need the feedback from the teacher who's teaching it. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you now a page of ways to have them process what goes on in the class. A little bit larger. OK. Um, and I'm going to ask you to read over those. And as you do that, I'm going to ask you to, to ponder them for a moment as you read one at a time. And which of them might you readily incorporate into your classes? So let me go away from this slide for a moment to the next one. This is what I'm going to ask you to, to do. OK, read over the 11 tactics. Ponder over them for a moment. Which of them might you readily incorporate in your classes? I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. And then I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. And I'm going to ask you kind of to share. Um, to share one or two suggestions that you think might be useful in your classes. And if you choose, if you're choosing only one suggestion, try it maybe to focus on one that you think might be helpful for the other people, or they might not have thought of it. So let me zoom in again. Okay. Okay, so let me interrupt you. Let me also point out something about these tactics before I put you into breakout groups. Look at number four. It says, give examples to clarify or support what they have said. And remember, it, it means for them to give examples. That's very different from my giving examples, right? And sometimes I'm going to want to give have them give examples before I give any of my own. Sometimes, most of the time, I'll be giving one of my, an example of my own, and then I'll ask them for one. But notice what a big difference it is. If I give an example of my own, I've led them, what, 60% of the way to giving an example of their own. Whereas once they're outside of class, they don't have me to prep them, prime them with an example. So it means have them give examples. And with number five, it says make connections between related concepts. Again, the idea is to have them make connections between related concepts. And from my point of view, not necessarily from yours, it's better to have them do it even if they get the connections between related concepts dramatically wrong, at least they've processed it. And if they get it dramatically wrong and I get to read what it is they've written, I now have information that I didn't have before. Wow, they're really misunderstanding this concept in a dramatic kind of way. So I'm now going to give...